first servant, the resident pastor, started with us in the first service, the part four of the service, the teaching series, engaging the wonders of praise. Engaging the wonders of praise. And that is the last part for this month. This is uh, the part 4B. I'll be looking at part 4B. Engaging the wonders of praise. The God is a God of wonder. And the only way to assess the wonders of God is through praise. It's through praise. There's nothing you, you are looking for. There's nothing or any challenges that you might be facing in life. The, no challenge of life would require more than praise to clear them off your way. Whatever, no matter how tough that issue of concern might look like, my prayer is that they will not survive this month in the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, they are not permitted to read. That challenge will not go with you as you are returning from this service. In the name of Jesus Christ. God will do wonder. And the wonders of God are available for you and I. They are available for you and I. We saw it from the scripture. The toughest battle in the scripture were all won by praise. We saw an example in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Reading it from verse 22 to 24. See how when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushment against the children of Hamor, Moab and Moseir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Said for the children of Hamon and Moab stood up against the inhabitant of Moshe, utterly to slay, utterly to slay, and to destroy them when they had made an hands of inhabitant of Seir. Everyone helped to destroy another, and when Judah came towards the watchtower. In the wilderness, they look unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead body falling to the earth, and none escaped by praise. No single enemies against the children of the Lord escaped. I decree concerning you, every enemies against your destiny will shall be crossed down in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, it look unreasonable when nations highly sophisticated with weapons coming against a nation and the next thing to do is to raise an altar of praise. To raise an altar of praise and begin to sing and celebrate the name of God. They turn God on and God take over their battle and they come on stage and they help to kill themselves until there was no man standing. The praise come. Every time you get to the witty end of life, you don't know what else to do. When you are confused, it's like the whole world is crumbling on you. Then if only you can switch over to praise, you will see divine intervention. Paul and Silas were unjustly in prison. And they were praying. The Bible said, and when they pray, in Acts of Apostles chapter 16, beginning from verse 25, the Bible said, at the midnight, Paul and Silas pray. They pray. And sang praises unto God. You know, when prayer is good, but every time you pray, God sends an angel to bring delivery, to bring the answer. In the book of Daniel chapter 9, you see when Daniel started praying, 21 days prayer and fasting, he was praying and God, the first day, God responded and sent an angel 
but the prince of Persia will lay the angels on the way. And Paul, they, was, they were praying. It looked as if nothing is going to happen. And they switched over to praise. And the Bible said, you know, the Bible said in Psalm 22 and in verse 3, said, Thou art God, O God, thou inhabit in the praise of his people. There is no demon or any force of hell that can lay God, the Almighty. So when God had the praises of his people, he came down by himself. That challenges that tough battle of your life that you don't even know what else to do. You can hand it over to God. Have a change of mind. This thing, this situation cannot kill me. It cannot swallow you. Allow God to take over. Allow God to take over that challenges in your life. And you see supernatural intervention in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every time you praise him, praise him with understanding. Now, many people praise God. Why? Because that is what is we are doing this month. That is what the church is doing. Or they only praise God anytime they come to church. But you must do it according to Psalm 47 verse 7. He said, God is the king of the heart. Sing praises with understanding. Understanding. And your high praises. When you give God high praises. Every time your praise goes up. In verse 5. He said, when, when the God has gone up. With what? With a shout. Every time your praise goes up. The mighty of God. The wonders of God will come down. Will come down. We come down. So shouting, celebrating, jubilating, celebrating God is a way to draw God and to have access to the power that cannot be defeated. In the book of Joshua chapter 6, if you read it from verse 1, the wall of Jericho was standing between the Israelites and their promised land. By their physical energy and whatever equipment they might be having, they, it will take them a longer time. They might not be able to assess it that according to the times that God has promised them. It might cost them so many. But God gave them a formula. And the formula is to sing and praise God. The Bible said... The Bible gave them an instruction to go around the wall of Jericho one per day. And on the seventh day, they should make it seven times. And the priest should lead and blow the trumpet. When they started shouting in verse 20, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 20, the Bible says, So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpet. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of trumpet. And the people shouted. With what? Great shout. Is somebody shouting? <laughs> and the wall fell down flat. So that the people went out into the city. And every man straight before him. They took the city. They, took, they did what? They took took over the city. They shouted. The shouting side is the winning side. When you shout on your enemy, God will rise up for you and swallow them up. The Bible said the wall of Jericho. The resident pastor said in first service, he said the, the, the wall of Jericho is a stick that they trailer. I read in Papa's book, he said, six chariots. Like a car can walk side by side on the, on, the, on, the, on the wall. It's as thick as anything. And the Bible says the wall fell down flat. That means it sank into the ground. It sank into the ground and it leveled to the, to the ground. 
and they all walk in into their promised land. I don't know the wall of Jericho. I don't know situations that look like a wall of Jericho that have been injuring you or positioned as a barricade or a, an embargo from you to enter into your promised land. Today, they will fall down flat in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Prayer warfare is good. But praise warfare is the best. Every time you praise and begin to sing praises to God. It gives you victory in the battles of life. It puts you in commanding the supernatural victory. Supernatural victory. People might join you in prayer. But when people join you in praising God, your enemy will give way. And it will come faster. Because every time you are praising God, God himself is involved. God inhabits in the praise of his people. That's why you must give God quality praise. Give him. Like God someone said in first service, you know, when you are singing, if it's only when we are singing together that you consider the, you be conscious of the key A, key B, or key C. When you are singing alone, God is not looking for your key B or key D. Sing to him, sing praises. If you don't even know the lyrics, be on it. Be clapping it, be jumping it. Just let your heart be connected. If your praise goes up to God, the wonders of God will come down upon you. It will come down upon you. In Psalm 149, if you read it from verse 1 to 7, the Bible said, it said, Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song. And his praise in the congregation of the saints. He said, Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with dream bread and harps. For the Lord take a pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. He said, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their bed. And let what? Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and two edges sword in their hands. Can you see? I praise in their mouth, two edges sword in their hands. Two edges sword. As you wipe it to this side and go to this way, it's destroying your enemy. Every time the high praise is in your mouth, the Lord has given you a weapon that cannot be defeated. I don't know the areas of life where things is not working. But you are trusting God. You have prayed. You have prayed. You can change over to praise and see what the Lord will do. Sometimes in the in the in the way my, people might look at it that you are not it's not reasonable. How can you be dancing when things are not working? How can you be dancing when things are not working? You should look serious. But for how long since you have been serious about your condition? Has it changed? Now, the wisdom is to hand it over to God and sing praises to God. Dance to him. Celebrate him. God, what God cannot do for himself, when man do it for him, what man cannot do for himself, God will do it. And I see him changing and, and changing and making situation to turn around for your good. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every obstacle will clear way for you. Every barricade will clear way for you. You get to the office. You are expecting something. They are telling you something else. Let God be praised. Let God be praised. Then the heart will yield increase for you. The heart, the increase upon the heart. It can only be unlocked through your praise. Through our praise. Through our praise. Through our praise. In Psalm 1, 1 verse 4, 
I mean, Psalm 114, verse 1 to 7, you see how barricade, barrier, obstacle, giving way. When praise come on stage, enemy go on hide. When praise come on stage, the enemy go on what? On hide. They went to hide. Every enemy of your life will go to hide. Every barricade, everything that will not allow you to see, that to enjoy blessings of God, we go to hide. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You must learn to just, learn, let praise be your lifestyle. Let it be what you do every time. You can do it while driving. You can do it while walking. You can do it while cooking. You can do it at all time. Let this praise continually be in your mouth. Thank him. Thank him all the time. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Celebrate him. When things is not working as planned, thank him. Your thanksgiving is what will bring it to work. You see, when you are worried, the only thing you get from worry is weariness. The more you are worried, the more weary you become. Nobody has ever having a way out, out of being worried. Worry has no solution. If you read the book of Psalm, I mean Matthew chapter 6, read it from verse 25 to down to 33, I mean, uh, 33, 32, uh, you will see that worry cannot add a cubit to your life. It can add anything to you. It can change your situation. The only thing that can turn around your situation is when you hand over the situation to God. And that can only be achieved through our praise. When you begin to sing praises to him, I don't know. They might have given you a report that that sickness is a terminal disease. But praise terminates sicknesses. You see, miracles. When Lazarus was buried, I always, anytime I, I'm privileged to read that scripture, I always think, what, what the nature of sickness that killed Lazarus? I believe the sisters, they might have tried some things to my own medication, do whatever they can. When they were tired, no result, they sent to, for Jesus. And Jesus delayed extra time. And when he, he was dead and buried, he came. He said he's sleeping, he's not dead. But the Bible made us to understand that he was already stinking, buried. Now, something killed him. I don't know, maybe cancer. Maybe eye fever. Maybe one dangerous terminal disease or blood disease. Something killed him. One disease killed him. Now, when Jesus called forth Lazarus, what happened to this disease that killed him? He lost grip. He couldn't hold him anymore. He was renewed. A new being, a new organ was given to him. That means God has the power to keep you and her. That terminal disease they said you have will be terminated right away. Yeah. As you are seated, that terminal disease is being terminated. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, in the book of Isaiah chapter 38, the stories of, uh, if you read it from verse 1 to uh, verse 5 or down to verse 17, Ezekiah, the king who was sick, and the king, I mean, God said to Isaiah the prophet, with eagle eyes, he never missed target. Go and tell him that that sickness is what? Unto death. And he went, delivered the message, prepare your house, you will die. The moment he received the message, he, he did not start crying. He rather started praising and said, God, do you know, is there any other person? Have you found an alternative who will be praising and serving you the way I'm doing? Do this and that. Where is the residue of my, the, the residue of my life? 
He began to praise and sing praises to God. If you read verse 17, he said, I will sing my song. He praised God. And immediately God sent the prophet to tell. He said, go back and tell him that God has heard his cry. Now, the sickness that was to kill him, what happened to it? It was this power. It, was, it became powerless. That grip of the devil over your kidney, that grip of the devil over your liver, that, kid, that grip of the devil over your heart, I command them to lose right now. That disease in your blood, high blood pressure, high sugar level, leukemia, whatever that make it to sick, that terrible disease is destroyed right now. Just learn how to praise. You know, it is all about your mind shift. If you can shift your mind to the praise, you will see how God will turn things around. You will not understand. And what you hear determine what happened to you. Remember today is what? It's our covenant day of long life. Whatever that are standing to obstruct that commandment, that agendas of God concerning you will be destroyed today. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Longevity is a function of sound health. Long life. It's not just a long life, but a meaningful long life. A what? Meaningful, enjoyable long life. Long life. There are some people that live long, but their life is useless. I don't know whether it's true. I saw something on the most video clip. One man lived for 300 years. He was walking like they were holding him like a stick like this. I don't know whether that's true. I've been a Photoshop. Not true. But <laughs> when your life is still productive and affecting and changing life, that is kind of long life God is talking about. And you will enjoy it. I said you will enjoy it. You will enjoy it. Never allow the devil to tell you there is no way. There is way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. The truth and life. The truth and life. The kind of long life God, the God's servant, well, the resident pastor was talking about the, the, uh, uh, Austin, the mothers of Joel Austin. That was to die by terminal disease. All the husband and their friends on a robot, Kenneth Hagin, all of them, they came and prayed with the wife of their, their friend. Over that, many of all of them, majority of them have gone to be with the Lord. This woman, this month, is celebrated 91. 90 what? And he's still looking, the son was... Your health was holding him, holding her. 91. Death has forget, for, forgetting her. I decree. It will become a proverb concerning your family that they don't die young. It will be a song that in their family they don't die young. In the name of Jesus Christ. Abraham lived long. He lived long. Remember, longevity is a promise of God. It's not what you desire. It's what God promised you. Psalm 91 verse 16. Say with long life. Will I what? Long, call it long. With long life will I satisfy you. And so in my salvation. Long life. You will enjoy life to the fullness. And to confirm this, Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse 10. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Jesus said, 
Satan came to destroy, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come to give you what? Abundant life. That is to enjoy life in abundance. It, to enjoy it to the fullness. You will see, you will live to see your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. Somebody gave me one daughter. The age of that woman, the barrier is 103. My little baby said, Daddy, what? What happened to her? I said, she, she died. He said, why? I said, she died. I said, he said, 103. Why can't you continue to believe it? To live? She, but, I said, but she died. He said, okay, if people die, where did they go? I said, they go to heaven. He said, is heaven out of Nigeria? I said, I, I said, go and meet your mommy. I will see you later. Because she will use dumb questions to jump me. He said, Nigeria is heaven. Is he abroad? I said, it's not abroad, it's above. <laughs> the kind of life that God has is tough for you. Like Abraham. Abraham lived 175. And God was saying in the first service, after Sarah, she married Keturah. And she not only was, she has another children. That means, she was still active, agile, and he was performing excellently well, even at the old age. That's what the Bible says. Even at the old age, she will be flourishing, fat and flourishing. Every sickness that is identified with you because of old age, that disease is terminated right now. What the Bible said is that you will be flourishing. So, I want you to see longevity. I want you to see longevity. See it. Don't allow your circumstances, things around you, to dictate for you. Situation, you can come out of it. Don't give up. Don't surrender and say, let me go. No, don't go. There are still more to enjoy. There are still better. After all, the heaven you want to go, you will be there till eternity. This one that have number, enjoy a good number. Enjoy a good number. Because when we, we are all going to heaven, when we get there, we will be there forever. So, but this one that we have limited time, let's enjoy a good one. Let's have minimum three figure. Three figure. The Bible said in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 20, it said, A child shall die at when? Is that not three figure? And if he die at one day, that means he's still a child. He's still a child. It will become your own testimony. No one die young in your family. I said, No one die young in your family. They will see you with your siblings, your brother, your sister. You are 91. He is 89. One is 95. All of you, you will be alive to enjoy life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know, it's good. When, when you are enjoying good life, longevity, the one thing to keep people faster is when you are now the one burying all your siblings. But when all of you are enjoying good life, longevity, it helps you to live more longer. Isn't it? Isn't it? You will live more longer. I said you will live longer. But remember, as far as your eyes can see, in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3, the Bible says, the no, he says his spirit will not strive with men anymore. And it's in the numbers of our days will be 120 years. Are you seeing that? 120. God used the mouth of Moses to say that. He said it and he lived it. He lived 120 years. And the Bible said his eyes was not dim. 
his natural strength was not what? A pity. A decree for you. The kind the strength upon Moses, that strength will be multiplied over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Today, we know that Jesus Christ has taken away every covenant of death over your life. As long as you have believed in him. Look at this scripture in Isaiah chapter 28. Let's read verse 15 and verse 18. Isaiah 28. Should you please give me that scripture? Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15, beginning then verse 18. It said, because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. Say, God forbid. Say, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lie our refuge, and under falsehood have we hide ourselves. Jump to verse 18. And your covenant with death shall be disannoyed. Yeah. You didn't hear what I said? Yeah. That is the word of the Lord. He said, the covenant with death shall be disannoyed. Yeah. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. And when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. Every agreement of death, every covenant of untimely death over your family is cancelled by the blood. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, Jesus said, Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. He said, Jesus said in that scripture, He said, I am he that liveth, and I was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the key of hell. Jesus holds the key. Death is a servant. He cannot kill you without a permission. Because he's not the one who created you. You belong to God. If you read Psalm 100, read it from verse 1, you belong that you are God's people and the, past, and the people of his pastor. God, Satan was not the one that created you. So, devil has no power to kill you. Jesus owed the key. The Bible said, all power. I think Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. He said, all power in heaven, on earth, and beneath it has been given to me. He owns the power. So the power to kill as long as no, it's no longer in the hand of the devil. It's no longer in the hand of the devil. Jesus has the key. If your father owns the key, will he open it for death to come in? Will he open it for crime, for evil to come into your life? No. So every evil agenda that enemy has put in place concerning you or any members of your family is cancelled by the blood. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. So see longevity. See longevity. Always see it. I will live long. Say it with boldness. It doesn't matter the pain you have at the moment. But tell that pain, you will not kill me. I will live and I will live well. I will not die, but to live to declare the counsel of the Lord. So see it that longevity is for you. What is the essence of God's promises when children are not enjoying it? The Bible said the breast, bread are not for dogs. All the blessings of God are children's what? Bread, including longevity, including long life, strength, hell and healthy. So it's meant for you. You must claim it. You must enjoy it. You must partake of it. And no devil will take it away from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will live long. I said you will live long. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, according to scripture, there are things that are responsibility you must take 
if you must live long. Yes, God has put it in plan. But you also have responsibility. As a believer, you must be a born again child of God. You must be what? Be a child. That is the only way you can partake of the covenant. The Bible said in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, He said, For whosoever that is born of God overcometh the war, including that disease, including that untimely death. I don't know the life, the pattern in your family, the evil pattern, that they die untimely death. But concerning you, that pattern, evil pattern, has been disannoyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be born again and remain so. Number two, be committed to serving God as a lifestyle. Exodus 23, verse 25 and 26. Exodus 23, the Bible says, And yes, I serve the Lord your God, and yes, I bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness. I will take what? Sickness. There are some people that sickness take out of this world. There are some people that they are not sick. Yes, something take them off. Whatever that take you untimely, that thing is destroyed. No accident, no evil attack on you. You will never be involved in anything that will take your life untimely. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 26. Say, there shall nothing cast their young, not even miscarriage of business, of career. Say, nor be barren in the land. Say, the numbers of your day. What is the number of your days? What is the number of your days? Now, the best way to know the, the remaining, the actual, the remnant. How old are you today? Minus 120. Then you tell God, I have 80 to go. I have 70 to go. I have how many? 50 to go. Hallelujah. Imagine our church board now. In the next 50 years, we give you balance. The two you just, I mean, the one you just put on top, we give you as a bonus. Hallelujah. Just be 121. Hallelujah. And you should be healthy. Strong. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You remove the one you have used from the, what is it? Let me, you know you, when you are praying, Lord, I still have 70. So that that sickness will not keep you, will not afflict you. And that will be your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, be committed to speaking right to all. Many people, their mouth is their death. Something has happened. They have shouted their father head. The father head that cannot rescue the father. All manners of things. Some years back, I was in Benue State. A man was very sick. And the pastors have been going there in one of our uh, infant church. And the pastor, the pastor that was pastor of that church came to the other church and said, Sir, one of our members is sick and he said, he's tired, he want to go. That he should come and pray for him to go. He said, did he say he want to go? He said, he must come and pray. So the man went there to go and pray for him. And since he was waiting for prayer to go, after the prayer, he went. If he had said, I don't want to go, this sickness must not kill me, God will have heard. God will have confirmed it. And that sickness will have vanished. Mind what you say by your mouth. Mind your work. Don't run. Don't allow your mouth to kill you. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. Death and life are in the powers of your tongue. And they that love this and eat the fruit thereof. Be careful. Be careful what you say. Look at this scripture. Psalm 34, verse 12 and 13. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? That's what we are talking about. Verse 13. Say, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lip from speaking good. Don't speak evil. Death is not looking for you. Death is not looking for you. You are not the one they are looking for. Speak with confidence and boldness that you are not die young. You will not die young. 
Don't say what they say. What they say is what is killing them. Exclude yourself from what they are saying. And number four, free yourself from fear of death. Fear of death. What kill, what brought challenges upon Job in Job 3 verse 25. Job 3 verse 25 is what he fear most, what has happened to him. Fear, fear, fear. For the thing which I greatly fear is come upon me. That which I was afraid of is it, come unto me. Stop being, don't allow, don't, you, are, you have not received the spirit of bondage to fear again. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Jesus said in Hebrews chapter 2 and in verse 14 and verse 15. He put about 2 verse 14 and 15. He said, for as much then as the children are partaker of the flesh and blood. And he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through the death he might destroy him. That had what? The power of death. That is the devil. Look at verse 15. He said, and deliver them who through fear of death were all lifetime subject to bondage. Fear keep you in bondage. Don't allow the fear of death. Some people cannot go out to their neighbor within their neighborhood in the night. The fear of night is their own. Some people will hear sound at the bank on their door like this. The fear will somebody will talk, some people will shake like this. Fear. It's a spirit. It's not only an emotional disorder, it's a spirit. That's why you must not allow the spirit of fear to grip your heart. You will live long. I said you will live long. You will live long in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You must take up the faith, the sheet of faith against all the threat of death. Whatever the enemy is doing is bringing your way. Stand your ground and declare it. I will, not, I will live. 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 Papa said one day they were traveling and the, the one of the engines of the uh, aircraft was bad. And he, he saw the way the, uh, the pilot was. He went in and asked him, what is the problem? He said, one engine is bad. He said, make a U-turn. And Baba walked out of the cubit there and came to the other people traveling with him. I said, do you care for biscuit? Do you care for wine? Do you care for this? He said, because if he tell them that one engine is bad, all of them will be, you know, some people pray, but the prayer is prayer out of fear. And the moment they are casting and banding, they can even drop the remaining engine. The aircraft will just fall down. The way some people pray is fear. It's fear. It's fear. And the moment you allow fear, the enemy will have access. That is the only, it is only faith. Faith and fear cannot cohabit. It's like fire and water. It's like light and darkness. I see the Lord delivering you from that spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus. And as I close this morning, you need to be committed to a life of joy. Rejoicing and what? Thanksgiving. Joy. Joy. Why are you, why is the, you are, you are, you are, the trouble of what, how much they will sell market. The next market day is your child. What is your problem? Whatever that is happening, you are not the only one. Don't bother yourself. Don't bother yourself. God will, sur he will surprise you. Be joyful. Some people, when you see them in the early in the morning, you see the way they frown their face. You will not, you will be afraid even to greet. You might say good morning and say what is good about the morning. Be joyful. Laugh your, your challenges away. Let the, joy, the Holy Spirit be the reason why you are joyful. 
Let it well out of your belly. Let it come. You might be remembering things that are not working, but things that are not working will not work until you begin to work and appreciate God for the one that is working. A lady, a my young man came to a man of God. He said, Sir, I need prayer. Nothing is working in my life. Nothing is working. He said, Okay, you mean nothing is working? Okay, he now gave him a, a place, a, 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 a full cap seat, and said, Oh, yeah, begin to write those things that are not working. He wrote, wrote, full page. He said, extra seat. He collected it. He wrote it. He wrote very plenty. I said, you mean nothing is working? He said, okay. He said, nothing is working, Oga. Nothing at all. He said, okay, just collect this paper. Write number one, what is working? Your eyes. Ah, my eyes is working, oh. Write your kidney. Your kidney is not working. Ah, my kidney is, not, is working, oh. Leg. Ah, my leg is working. Begin, when he started writing out, what is working? He discovered that the list of what is working are more than what is not working. Shift your attention for what is not working and thank God for what is working. Rise on your feet. Somebody wave your hand and appreciate God. Give him thanks. Celebrate Jesus. Father, I thank you. This is working. Begin to mention them. My eyes is working. My kidney is work, they are working. My heart is working. My, my mind is working. My legs are working. My hands are working. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Before I got married, you know, so, uh, uh, I mean, sometimes ago, my daughter, some, uh, one of my, my daughter, anytime she go to toilet, she will pull, enjoy herself, pull, finish, and just go. Uh, you want to use it, you will go there, you see pull there, waiting for you. The thing will get me angry. What can, you, can, you are not pouring water just to press and flush. Yeah, I forgot. One day, somebody called me around 12 midnight. That, Daddy, please pray for me. I cannot poo. You cannot what? I cannot poo. Uh, so anytime my daughter forget to flush, I will help her flush. I didn't see the poo. I see, thank God, she can poo. She can, she can poo anytime she feel like I'm not praying for her to poo. Don't you know? And you are saying somebody is, is mess, is fat. When I remember when my wife, my wife just had first, they gave her plenty of drug to when the day you hear you fat, come to us. It's a prayer, just fat. The moment she released gas like this, even me, I enjoyed it. Because if he did not remove, release that gas, my pocket goes so far. And God gave to me just. The tea is a because some people are paid to do it, and he said nothing is working because they disappointed you in your place of work. Is there anything working at all in your life? Go ahead and celebrate him. Celebrate it. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Father, I thank you. This is working. That is working. Everything is working. It's working. That's why I'm praising you. I'm not praising you because I, I have food to eat. I'm praising you because everything is working in my life. Thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. All eyes close, all head bows. God only hears the cry of children. If you are not one of his children, God will not hear you. You are here, you know you are not born again, you are not a child of God. You want to give your life to Christ? Can't you take this opportunity this morning and surrender your life to you? Walk out of the devil. Laugh at him. So that the world can rejoice with you. Anywhere you are, wherever you are, can you raise up your hands? You want to give your life to Christ? Lord Jesus, say this way after me. Lord Jesus, I celebrate you. And I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Write my name in the book of life. I confess you with my mouth. I believe you in my heart 
that you are the Lord. You are my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I'm now born again. I'm a child of God. For in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Somebody pray that prayer. Wherever you are, quickly come before the altar. Let it place the seal of God upon you.